Hey everybody here, New John Simmons Show. My guest today, a special friend of mine, Tony Wyman, man. How are you doing? Good, good, really good. Or Anton, you go, I have lots of different names you've been by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody has different names for me. Yeah, Anton, Anton, Tony, yeah. friends call me Tony. Yeah. Uh, um, Antoine, yeah. Anthony. Antoine, I remember some, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nobody gets it right all Back the time. Back in the day, yeah. It's really Anton, but... You know, and then when they call the house and they ask for Anton, Tracy goes crazy. My wife, <laughs> right, my wife, right, right. Just, that's not that's your name, but that's not what we call you. That's not what, <laughs> what does she call you? Tony. Tony. Okay, yeah. yeah. When she's in a nice mood. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Uh, uh, Tony, uh, for those who have just tuned in, uh, man, I am excited to talk to you because you are one of the rare people in my life who was there before I was born again and after. And there's not a lot of people that I know who have seen the old John Simmons and still hang out with the new John Simmons <laughs> or, or the people who know the new John Simmons who have any idea what the old John Simmons was like, you right. know? So you're somebody who has walked uh, outside of Kevin, maybe as long as anybody else in my life has just been able to be in both worlds. Uh, and I'm excited to get to talk to you about some of that today. Yeah. <laughs> you were just telling me about this email uh, that you pulled up there. This, um, yeah, I, I, um, 2011, we had been uh, Testimony House for... Yeah, well, let's, like, before we get to okay, that, yeah, okay. let, let's back up. So yeah, let's back I, up. I, should, I should set the stage here a little exactly. bit. Right? Yeah, so exactly. So the stage is, is that I met you uh, dealing poker at Ameristar. So this mm -hmm. was 2004, I think, is when I started working at the casino dealing poker. I right. just turned 21. Uh, you were a dual rate supervisor. I believe yeah. that's what you were doing yes. at the time. Dual rate supervisor. So my boss, essentially, at the casino. And uh, the casino, you know, had, had a number of uh, employees, obviously. The poker department itself maybe had 50 employees or so, about that. give or take, you know. Yeah. And uh, so you're, you're overseeing that group. And so not everybody is closely connected, but you you see everybody every day and you talk to them and stuff like yeah. that. And you were a couple years older than me, so you and me didn't necessarily spend a lot of time together in the beginning. But uh, what were some first thoughts? Do you remember? I, I can tell you what I remember. Like, you were just so calm in, in demeanor. Like, for the, the rest of us were always like a hot, little high strung, you know? And you were always yeah. a little calmer than everybody else around the building. <laughs> Well, that's, I mean, that's pretty much the type of person I am, especially unless, you know, something really gets in and then I got to turn into hyper mode. But uh, you, I was impressed with as a dealer because you had the chops. You you could yeah, deal right. really good. You had the hands for it. You had yeah. uh, the table attitude for it because you knew the game. Yeah, unfortunately. Especially, <laughs> unfortunately, right, right. I later found out how much you knew the game yeah, yeah, yeah. when you moved on to another casino and came back as a player. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I saw the real John. Yeah pop out of the woodwork yeah you know? it's 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 one thing to work with somebody and then another to sort of see them outside right. of the, the that, right. that atmosphere you know right well you were definitely a person who when you were a player had a fun time because you like to drink a little bit yeah. you like and you got excited about what you were doing when you were winning when you weren't winning you were like man nobody really wants to talk to you a lot you're really you got really quiet yeah, I, uh, that that brings back a lot of memories. You got you know? shut down. Uh, well, that that was the joy in uh, of my addiction was that uh, the highs and lows of it, right? Yeah. So it's like if yeah. you were winning, I wanted to be everybody's friend. Yeah. I would have bought you a million drinks and hung out with you all night, and you know, heard all your conversations. But the second I was losing, I'd go into that shell, yeah. that shell of a person, really. Like I, I didn't want to talk because I it would bring to all my mind all the trouble that I was now in, right? All the money that I owed somebody, yeah. all the diff difficulties well, that I was facing in life, you know, and it brings it all to reality. And that's what you all were seeing, depression in real life, and, you know. And what I saw was you weren't a recreate, you were a recreational addict. Mm. You were a recreational player because you didn't do it for a living. You did it for the fun and excitement. And I could see you when you had monster pots in front of you and monster stacks. And it was like, John, you should be leaving, but you were having way too much fun. Yeah. In the moment, because that's what they, that's what happens. And, uh, when you started the downswing, like any other player, you ble bled it all off and then you got up and left and, you know, from the point where you started going down and you got really quiet and dark mm -hmm, again mm -hmm. and you just kept chasing it harder and harder. Yeah. Boom. And it's called being on tilt and you did, <laughs> and then you'd get up and leave. 
and then we might see you in a week or so. You'd go back to working, yeah. get yourself a paycheck. Oh, I'm staked again, and away we go. Yeah, you, you've hit it right on the head. I, you know, I talk, I tell all people all the time this cycle of addiction, right? So it's like you lose all your money, then you've got to earn it back, right? So you got to right. pay back Peter and Paul and everybody else you took money from, and pay your rent and all that, you know. And mm -hmm. you go into, I don't, I don't talk about this often, this sort of world where it's just like you ignore everybody else and you just work, 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 so you can build it up and, yep. and then sort of show your face again, yep. you know, and uh, and be back in that world and try and you know, get back to the top of the mountain. But hit, problem, that, hit that bad beat. Yes. That would really, I would be set for life if I hit that bad oh, beat. That was definitely no. a thought I had for a long time. Everybody. It's funny though, because uh, you, had, you had mentioned sort of like, uh, you guys noticed that in me that I was like going down, but I never really noticed it in myself. You know, and it's, something, right. it's something you don't realize you're going through in the moment. I couldn't have told you like, oh yeah, I'm sad now and happy now. I couldn't have expressed it that way. No, but there were times probably you you'd had probably a little too much alcohol to understand when we were talking to you whether we could see you and go like hey john you want to take a break from this and, and then you'd go you'd be going like no nah, i'm i'm good i'm good mm. and yeah. you know and we really you know the rules you can't really get into somebody and say no john you know i think you should mm -hmm. get off the table now yeah that's just not the part of the world there that it's one of the bad parts of the world. That's why I'm no longer a supervisor. Yeah. And I went back to dealing because I just had to disassociate myself yeah. and fool myself that for the longest time I could put away on the side and say, you know what? I'm not taking house money. I'm not making these people sit down. They're playing against each other. Yeah. I'm just an instrument. Well, yeah, you know what? And a gun is an instrument of death if somebody mm. pulls the trigger. And I, it took me a long time to really realize that, that I was just fooling myself to yeah. believe that and uh man it was a tough yeah. thing to face when i got there yeah well you're still working at the casino and so yeah i, I am but I am. it's you know it's like one of those things i'm really trying to retire try to get sure. out of there the best i can i mean it, it wasn't that long ago that i really faced the idea when i'm looking at retirement going like you know i've, I've invested all these years and i still see the same people over and over and what brings it around is Vito came back a friend uh, the guy that hired me went on to other casinos came back just recently and he's going like the crowd never changes in here and I'm oh. going like wow you know you're right I mean it's just like yeah 23 years down the road it and does it's still feel like there the the environment lends itself to just people never leaving you know if you've got the money to no one ever goes right you know if you if you don't have the money like me when i was broke you know it's like i yeah. don't show up but if you have the money the the culture is the same like it, it's probably it's probably very similar feeling as it mm -hmm. was 25 years ago whereas yeah. you know like things in technology and culture changes but in the casino really it just stays the same exactly. it, it's really it's just like there's no clocks on the wall it's smoky every the, yeah. you know, and there's that environment never changes and neither does the clientele right so the it's clientele a, change doesn't never changes unless they die or, right yeah. It's, it's it's a time capsule of slow motion. Yeah. Really. Slow motion. Same people in, same people out. You know what seat they're going to sit in. You know what they're going to order. Mm -hmm. You know how they're going to play. You know who they're going to, why they're there, you know? Yeah. I remember when I got born again and thinking, oh, got to get out of this, got to get out of this. But then I also saw it as an evangel uh, uh, evangelistic opportunity, right? To be able to share my faith with these other people, even though I really hadn't been called to do any of that yet. Like I was really excited to talk to people about Jesus and the casino and like, yeah. like, Hey, yeah, my life's changed. And, and they did not respond very well to it. No, <laughs> no. And it's hard. I still, I still minister to people, but I know it's when they kind of ask for it. I can yeah. step in and go, Hey, you know, you might want to do this. You might want to take a look at this, you know, yeah. or think about this. And I've had, to, I've been able to do a couple, but, it was the surprise when Kevin came to me about you. Yeah. Moving on with the story. Yeah. So I want to talk about that. Uh, but first, before we get into that part of it, because it okay. is, it, sure, we can no. talk about that for a long time. Yeah. Uh, you're, how did you come to faith? Because I know that you, you're, you're the Christian working in the casino, but we want to sort of unpack your story a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Um, born and raised traditional hardcore Catholic. Yeah. Went to school, altar boy, everything. Weddings, funerals, did it all. Um, pretty much turned my back on faith because I couldn't take the religion. I always had faith in God. Yeah. I knew that God was out there, but when you don't get attached to something, you still shy away from it. But I, I mean, my, my parents were upset. I'm not going to Catholic church anymore. Blah, blah, blah. You know? So I moved on. Uh, later on, I got divorced. I met Tracy. Tracy was part of a ministry that she got ousted from. Mm. Because that ministry was turning from faith-driven to man-driven. The power 
which all religions sometimes have that, even open ministries and stuff. It's like somebody gets to be the the chief, the the boss, top yeah. pastor, whatever you want to call them, and all of a sudden the the man world takes over. Commercialism. Oh, we're going to gift you with this car. We're going to gift you with these free rides. You get to eat for free. Everybody loves you, and you you're patting yourself on the back, and all of a sudden you're the king, mm-hmm. and God's the king. But you just mm-hmm. kind of put that to the side. Well. She didn't like that part, and she voiced her opinion about it, and they excommunicated her. Oh. Well, that's where I met her in Arizona, right after she was excommunicated. And we got to know each other, and we got married. And uh, my casino basically fell apart out there, so where are we going to go? We moved to Missouri. Yeah. And uh, when we got here, uh, we had been here a couple of years, and we're going like, you know, she goes... I really miss being in a church. So she brought me back to the church. Um, not a Catholic at, church, though. Not a Catholic church. No, she she won she won a, a non-denominational Christian. So she checked. You know, there there's plenty of them out there. We ended up going uh, the Sunday before Father's Day to St. Louis family, and I walked in there, and their mantra on the wall was, uh, "Help people." Period. Honor God, period. And what always stuck in my mind was not so much the whole thing. It was the period. Mm. Help people, period. Period is end of sentence. No questions asked, do it. Honor God, period. End of sentence. No questions asked. And I looked at that and I'm going like... And then I heard the pastor and he's talking about it. And it wasn't the rah-rah. You go on any holiday, Father's Day, Mother's Day, you're going to hear a big, elegant spiel. Mm -hmm. This one, he got down to hardcore on it. And I'm going to be like, you know what? Okay, so we went back a couple of times. Boom, we're back in it. And and that's part of this message here I was going to – I'll share with you. Um, And uh, so then we stayed there for a while and we realized that that church is a shepherd's church. It brings in people, gets you closer to God. And then you move on because you need a better feed. Yeah. You, and we bounced around, bounced around, and we've been to Faith Church, and we've been to other churches, and now we're with um, North Road Church because Greg, the pastor there, as you met him, mm-hmm. he is a teacher, not a preacher. He doesn't have a story about his dad. He doesn't have a story about growing up as a motorcycle guy or anything like that. He comes out and he goes, he does have family stories, but it's like, you know what, here's the subject we're going to pick. And we're going to go down this road with it. Mm-hmm. And we're going to pick a four-week thing or a, a two-month thing. And we are learning and feeding off it very well. And, and Nikki, my daughter, who never wanted to go to church, she went to all the, the kid churches. And she said, all we do is play. And we don't, you know. And she got into a dark side for a while. She's going to church and has been successfully for wow. three, four months now. That's awesome. And she goes. She, I mean, she's like, Dad, you know, I got my alarm set, but wake me up. We're going. And, you know. Are you listening? Today I today I was <laughs> She's today, telling you, Dad. <laughs> today I was a little preoccupied because I had to get take care of something. Mm-hmm. And it was all part of the church something, but she's only she bumps me said, Are you listening to this? <laughs> and I'm going like, Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you we've got her listening to that. Yeah. And she she sees as being and she's twenty one now, so she's growing. But that was it. She's just and I was so proud and so happy yeah. because she is getting involved and, and connecting. Yeah. And that's and that's what I we need. Now we just need Hannah to do it. She's gonna get there, but you know, it's like she's sixteen and you know, now she's growing and expanding. So yeah. she's gonna get there. I what, we know it. What was it about uh coming back to church, you know, for the first time in a long time, a, a different type of atmosphere, non denom church, and, and you saw this message on the wall. What started happening in your heart and what was changing that uh, you started to turn your life back to Christ? Well, it was the first when I first walked in, it was like, uh, they're gonna play music, da 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 da, you know, and then we're gonna hear it, da 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 we need money, we need this and, <laughs> right. And but we didn't hear that. We heard the the singing, a lot of singing. <laughs> and then he gets up there and he goes, you know, he went through his whole thing. And and then he says, and this is the last thing we don't really want to touch on it. But, you know, we're going to take collection on a, for the Lord. Uh, but, you know, don't feel like you have to or anything. And, you know, if you want, uh, we're not even going to send the pay, play down or anything like that. There's a box by the door if you want to contribute on your way out. And I'm going, hmm, different. Different. And then... I went home and I just had to think about it. I'm like, maybe this is the place I want to settle because I felt comfortable. I felt people loving me. When you grow up, (laughs) 
excuse me, right. when you grew up in a Catholic church, the only thing I knew in the Bible was the verses that I was forced to read every Sunday mm, mm, mm -hmm. or the gospel or the epistle. <coughs> I guess to get you a water. Hole. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway. So I, I knew nothing of the Bible. Really. I knew that uh, Easter was, you know, the birth of or the death of Christ and rising and, and Christmas is the birth and yeah. all the stuff. In the, and that was it. That was it. I mean, I couldn't quite, I couldn't quote you anything out of the Bible other than I knew I, I didn't even know there were that many books in it. I was surprised when I, opened, when I <laughs> yeah. cracked open a Bible and I'm like, wow, this is like, a really That's cause typically they don't, you don't take a Bible home. They just read it to you at service. Right. 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 Yeah. I don't know much about the Catholic church cause I didn't spend oh, time no, with it, was... it, but uh, that's typically my, my, uh, having been to a few masses and stuff, I, I don't see anybody open the Bible. They, they quote right. it, they quote it to you. But even it. religion classes was, yeah. was that way. It wasn't, it wasn't, we're going to teach about the Bible. We're going to, we're going to teach you about Catholic religion. Oh, gotcha. What this, what this is for and what that's for. So, and that's why I basically got away from it. And mm -hmm. I was surprised in a non-denominational, it's based on love. Theirs is based on guilt, you know? Oh, if you sin, you got to go to purgatory. My wife goes, what's purgatory? Like a bus stop? You're yeah. waiting to get to heaven? Interesting. Or, is there anything, is there really anything, a purgatory out there? You know? And I'm going like, uh, that's what I was told. And then it dawned on me more. It's like, that's what I was told. Mm. What you're told is what you believe. You believe your, what your parents tell you. You believe what your priest tells you. You believe. Yeah. And that's where your faith, if you truly believe it, that's going to be your faith you're going to believe in. But I couldn't. I'm going like, there's got to be more than this. Yeah. And I and I, I went round and round with my mom. And my dad couldn't believe it. But, but I, I was, when I was quoting Bible, I go, I told her, I said, my God is not a punishing God. My God does not punish you or make you hurt or anything. And and, and, and if, if people die, it's for a reason. Um. My God loves me. Yeah. And he forgives me. I don't have to I don't have to go to confession and do all this hoo ha because I know in my heart if I did something wrong, I can confess it to myself and say, you know what, you screwed up, but God still loves you. You're good. Mm. And that what brought me back to all of it is accepting the fact that there's my God's a different God than what I was raised yeah, on. Yeah, it's same God, yeah. same God, different view. Yeah, it, did, it didn't seem like uh, the hangups that some people have coming out of a different any any from one religion to the Christian faith, you know, uh, that you you get hung up on these different things. But it sounds like you just really found some liberty, you know, uh, realizing what I was found going relief. On. Yeah, peace. Yeah, peace inside. Less guilt, and and Tracy will tell you every now and then we'll get into some, and I'm oh I'm sorry, no. she says you got that you got that Catholic guilt coming out again. I'm going mm, like mm. okay, okay, don't yeah. feel guilty for what you're doing, it, you know. And I'm going yeah. like I understand that. But what year was this that you uh, found uh, Christ again, or you started coming to the family church? Uh, we moved here in uh, January of December of '98, basically January. I think we went there in 01 or 02. Okay, so somewhere tw 20, 20 plus years ago, give or take. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, and you'd mentioned your girls, because I want to talk to you about your girls a little yeah. bit. I'll let you tell the story about yeah. Anna and Nikki, man. Uh, amazing two daughters that you have. Uh, tell us about the journey to uh, bring them into your life. Well, Tracy and I had talked. She was a nanny, and a nanny for 20 years. And she's got pictures of all the kids she raised. Mm -hmm. And we got to talking. And um, early on in our relationship, um, we approached the idea of kids. And, and I go, she goes, well, I don't know if I want kids. I don't know if you want kids. And I'm going like, you know, I have three sons from a previous marriage. I have a family. Them. Mm -hmm. I can have another family. I said, but I'm not going to make you... I'm going to let you make the decision whether you want to have children because I'm more than willing to have more children. Mm -hmm. But I don't want you to ever think that it was me that stopped you from wanting to have them. I, you, you think now that, you know, you've had it, you've raised kids from babies on up to two, three, four, five years old till they go to school. Mm -hmm. And, and she goes, well, she goes, okay, think about it. And she goes, 
later on, about six months maybe, and she goes, you know what? I think we should have kids. And we tried a little bit, and uh, it wasn't working, so we, we thought of adoption. Mm -hmm. And we got hooked up with uh, the local adoption, and we found out what a fiasco. What a mess. Uh, open adoption, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas all the way down the road can come back and see your children. And it makes it confusing that you're adopting somebody and they've got another family out there that wants to get involved. Yeah, we talk to them. And, all and I'm, can, I'm yeah. kind of a greedy person. And she, she comes to me and goes, well, we can, adopt from, <laughs> we can adopt internationally. We can adopt from China, Guatemala, Chile, Russia. You want white children? You can get them out of the USSR at the time it was collapsing. But they come with fetal alcohol syndrome, cocaine addiction, or heroin addiction. The cleanest one out there was the Chinese because they had such strict guidelines and clean and, you know, everything. There was no friends of ours went to Russia and they were waiting in this long line to see a judge like 50 people. And their, their appropriator said... He said, give me 500 bucks. And he opened his umbrella and he tucked it in the umbrella and he tucked it under his arm and he went past the people and walked into the judge, came back out, grabbed them, walked right past 50 people and went in and saw the judge. Bribing the judge, oh. got them. They're on their way after seeing the judge. Two hours later, they're on their way to the airport and the cops are chasing them. Oh my gosh. They boarded the plane and their 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 appropriator said, hey, don't worry about it. Just get on the plane and get out of here. I'll they're not going to get to you. I'll get them before they... What? Yeah. <laughs> Like they he stole said, the kid. Yeah, well, it wasn't that they stole it. They but had yeah. all the legal paperwork. Yeah. But what they wanted to do is once you're in their country yeah. and you're willing to pay a judge, how much more money well, do you have? Yeah, let's get some more. Let's look yeah. you. Oh, wow. So he got him on a plane and got him out of there. And that was the only child they ever adopted from Russia. And we are going, like, I think we'll go to China. And we did. Yeah. And it was, it was a journey. Uh, we started into it. And it was supposed to only take 12 months. It ended up 18 months for Nikki. Um, and we were getting anxious. And uh, then uh, we get back, and we got Nikki, and on and on, and and uh, Tracy goes, friends of ours had adopted now two or three children from mm -hmm. China, and she goes, have you ever thought of another child? And, she, and I go, yeah, kind of, yes and no. She goes, well, you want to think about it? And I said, okay, and I thought about it, and she's going, I said, so what do you think? She goes, I don't know. We got Nikki, and everything's good. And I go, okay, well, let you know, let me talk to God about it. Yeah. And we happened to go back to Faith Church. No, St. Louis. We went back to St. Louis Family Church because Nikki was now in their program. Mm. We had we had went to another church, but we came back there because they had a great kids program and summer camp and stuff. Yeah. So we got her there. And uh, how old was Nikki when you picked her up? Uh, she was uh, uh, nine months old. Okay. And now she's like three. Yeah. Two or three. Uh, in the story, not in. She's like twenty one in real. Life. She's twenty one now, <laughs> yeah, but in the story, yeah, she was like she was like two or three. She yeah. was mm -hmm. she was just able to go into the kids area. Mm -hmm. So Tracy went inside and I said, I'll be out, I'll, I'll be in in a minute. And she said, okay. And I go out and I sit in front and they got a park bench in front. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, God, you know, I really want to hear from you. And I told you the story about I have ringing in my ears mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody hears that little voice in their head, you know, but that's supposed to be your conscience. When the ringing stops and I still hear a voice. I know it's God talking to me now, but that was one of the times, the first times that yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting there and it's going like, you know, tell me what's going on. And, and the pastor was out there talking to people, Jeff Perry. He's walking around talking to people and everybody leaves and he's still standing there. And I kind of look at him, he's like 15, 20 feet away. And he goes, he comes walking up to me and he goes, you know, I was going to go inside, but God put it on my soul to tell you the decision you make is going to be the right one. And he wants me to tell you the answer is yes. Wow. And that's the same thing I heard in my ear. Wow. Yeah. So I go inside. And I told so him, good. It's so I told, good. Well, I told, I, I told Tracy, I went inside and I told Tracy, I said, we're going to adopt another one. And she goes, what? And I go, yeah, we're going to do it. God <laughs> told me we're going to do it. <laughs> okay. Well, the story goes on. We put in for the paperwork and now it's only supposed to take two months or uh, 18 months. It took over two years. Your paperwork runs out after two years. You have to go in and spend another $1,500 to get your fingerprints redo. Mm. All the information stayed the same the time period and the coupon ran out. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we had to... How frustrating, probably. Well, we're redoing <laughs> it, and I'm getting frustrated. She says, yeah. we can switch countries. I go, 
no, we're not switching. We're going to stick with this. It's going to come. Everything slowed down because now China was accepted to get the, they were going to get um, the uh, Olympics in 08. Mm. And this is 06. So it's coming up and they're cleaning up their act. So everything's slowing down governmentally. So finally we get the notice. And we're going, like, yeah, great. And we go, got the picture of Hannah. The, the thing is, you get a picture in a dossier and you got eight weeks, you're going to travel. So you get to see them two months, but you only get a picture and no. a dossier. What's that like when you finally see your face, but you don't oh, have it's so it, it's yeah. so great. I mean, we got pictures, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's a little puff and thing. And they're all wearing <laughs> the same suit because they dress them in the same thing and puff them all up and make them look real pretty yeah. for the picture. And then they take them off that kid and put on the next uh, kid. Uh, uh, so all the pictures are the same. <laughs> same, same, same outfit, yeah, no. they don't buy all new suits for everybody. They just got like one or two the suits. The one picture outfit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's the point part of it. So we get there and we get Hannah and everything. And, and that's great. And uh you know, we're all, everything's good and everything. And we get home and we'd been home about six months and, it, you know, just generating in my mind, I'm going like, wow, you know, and, and Tracy comes to me with a story. She goes, you know, you're always gri griping and complaining about waiting for in and, 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 and then finally you got in your mind that you're on God's clock. It's not yours. He's going to make it happen when it happens. And I said, okay, I understand that, and, and I can get through that. And she goes, well, if we hadn't had to wait, we wouldn't have this Hannah. Even though we had picked out the name Hannah, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be her. And I said, what do you mean? She says, she didn't arrive to that orphanage till three months before we got her. So her dossier was fresh and brand new when we got it. Mm. If it if the time had been pushed back any and we got her in eighteen months instead of over two years, it would have been a totally different child. Yeah. So God had that specific daughter. He wanted us. To, he wanted us to have that Hannah. It's so good. Yeah. So good. He made us wait, and now I mean, yeah. I, I love my daughters. I mean, they're yeah. they're fabulous. What's it? So yeah. So I don't I don't have this. I have four natural kids. Mm -hmm. What's it like to adopt a child? What's it like? Uh Well. People say, you know, um, they ask Tracy, what's it like to adopt a child? You want to have a child. You do. It's, it's like an, almost like a natural birthing process, except you don't go through labor pains and weight and everything. She goes, mm -hmm. and her joke is, yeah, uh, I had two babies in five-star hotels, <laughs> which we did. <laughs> and they got hand-delivered. <laughs> And I said, yeah, and if you look at the bottom of the foot, it says, I was made here. Right, right. In China. <laughs> That's my joke. Not that made yeah. in China. Oh I was, God. yeah, not made in China. <laughs> I was made here. <laughs> so. That's a good one. Oh, wow. And, and they go, well, you know, why do you, and I said, well, we get the dossier and you have the right to accept or deny. You can say, no, I don't want this child. Mm -hmm. But I look at it that God Picks that child. There's a person in China that matches your folder with another folder mm -hmm. and puts them together. Mm -hmm. And I know God does it because, like I said, our folder didn't get there till she got the there. timing was right. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as giving birth to a child. You don't know what that child's going to be till after the child comes out, and then it's up to you. Yeah. So it's like having a baby. And, so it's and very similar to you. There's no really Oh, difference. yeah. For, yeah. Me it's, for me, it's almost like a, you know. Yeah. The same thing. As a dad, like you didn't carry any, any of them. So it's like. <laughs> right. Well, you know, but I was there at the, I yeah. was there at their birth. Yeah. At their birth in your life. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and the joy and everything. And, and <coughs> excuse me, I got a, I got a one clip when we got Nikki. Yeah. Uh, we're in the hotel room. Let me get a quick. Take your time. Here. Yeah. We're not in a rush. Take your time. We're in the hotel room. And I've got the, I got the video camera. And they hand Nikki to Tracy. Mm. And she starts crying. And I start. And that's the feeling. Yeah. Of the birth. Mm. Yeah. I can't imagine what it's like to... Uh, when, I, when I held Maya in my hands for the first time, my first child, I, it was like this experience that I just never had before. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, overwhelming. I was overwhelming. It was like, I'm going to love you for the rest of my And you really, you can't explain it to anybody who hasn't had it happen because a second before I was one way and then 10 seconds later, I'm completely different. Yep. 
and it it emotionally wrecks you. You're like, oh, like I couldn't believe how much love I, auto- I had for this child. It does. Yeah. It does. You. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. A miracle. Yeah. And just to see it, and 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 to have that child in your life. Yeah. And I mean, there's frustration and the whole nine sure. years you go through, but it's being there. It reminds me so much of God's love for each of us. And you talk about like Jesus goes after the one and leaves the 99. And like, if I think about my child, like the one, and I think about how much care and love I have for my one child, you know, or any one of my children and can try to like put my myself in the place of Jesus who loves all of us like that. Like the way that we're willing to cry and even just the memories of, yeah. of seeing our children for the first time. Yeah. We're, we're vulnerable to just it, remembering that, you know, that God has that for each one of us. And it's, it's such a good reminder that that's who created us. We're in his image. He loves us and he's shown us how to love and we love the him. Born so again yeah. is the birthing mm-hmm. process. Yeah. And, and, but you are now you are the child and he has the emotion. Yeah. And you can, and you, when you're born again, when you, when you get back into it, when you really, you really know that you're there is when you can feel the emotion mm-hmm. in what you do and what you read and just how you, how you approach things in life. Yeah. So, uh, you spent, uh, I'm sure a ton of money and stuff. What did you, what were you get up? Like? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm interested. Not only know the numbers. I'm just like, you, I knew you for time you had two jobs. Like what, you know, how are you trusting God to believe for these kinds of things? Cause uh, my, like my brother-in-law is adopting right now and it's costing like $40,000. I know that it's like a lot of money involved in these processes. So let's talk about the faith part of that. I think yeah. that that's important. Well, you're on a money search Yeah. and you save what you can and Sometimes people will gift you. Uh, there's foundations out there that help you. They will loan you money. Mm-hmm. So you they loan you money at a low interest rate because you pay them back and they fund future adoptions mm. with it. But yeah, it was like we racked up credit cards. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like you said, I was working. I ended up, I was working full time at the casino. I was working part time for Home Depot and me and a friend were rehabbing two homes at the time yeah. that we sold. And that's what, because we put all that time and effort and work in there, that's what paid for the second adoption yeah. and helped clean up the first adoption. I mean, but it was like a grueling five years in between the two. Yeah. And it was, and it got, and it, and it wore on us. Tracy got down to the point where, because I was gone so much and she was raising Nikki by herself and Hannah's in the future. Um, and she was working full time as a nanny, but it was like, you know, it was, I wasn't there. I wasn't there for support or anything. I was there to sleep and get up mm-hmm. and work and sleep mm-hmm. and get up and work. And I thought I was doing right. And I know and to this day, uh, I knew I was doing, I, I didn't know I was doing wrong because ingrained in me was you're the provider. Yeah. You, you need to do this. You need to step up. You need to take care of it. And this is the problem. The demon that we have today right now that we're just going through is that it, I, I, I'm, it takes me a while to listen to her. I can hear her, but do I actually listen, engage? Mm. And now we're going through that because it was, it was a, I got to another time, and that's why this thing is so important. This yeah. one thing. Well, let's talk of, about that then. So, I mean, if it's part of your story. So, uh, Kevin comes to you. So, I, to, to paint a picture for everybody who doesn't know our story is that I had quit working with you several years beforehand. Like you said, I was at the casino and I'd started coming and playing and then right. I, but then eventually, uh, I was working at a different casino right. and then I got radically born again and Kevin comes up, uh, and he, he came to the casino one night and he tells, yeah. he tells you a, a story. Do you remember that night? Yeah, I do. I bet, but I can, I can f- picture it. So because I, I was sitting at a table, I got off the table to, I'm on break and breaks a half an hour and, and Kevin's sitting at an empty table and, he come on over and I go, hey, Kevin. And him and I had ministered to a couple of people up there already mm-hmm. over the time. So I'm going, hey, Kevin, what's up? And he goes, you're not going to believe this when I tell you. <laughs> and I go, what? He goes, I'm going to tell you about John Simmons. You know John. I go, well, yeah, I know John. He goes, John Simmons is born again, <laughs> has quit the industry, quit gambling, quit drinking, and turned to God. And I'm going like, what's the punchline? Right. I go, oh, really, really? Is he dead? Like- no, I said, I, I mean, I was flabbergasted. I'm going like, really? And he goes, yeah. He, said, he says, I want you to come on over sometime when you can. 
and and because we're we're having meetings and stuff, and I'm going like, okay, yeah, I was excited, and, and he told me the story. He goes like, yeah, uh, John was basically at the table, and he heard it from he heard it that says you got to quit and get out of here or something of that nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, my, I said, you know, I heard that same thing God said to me about a year earlier and I didn't act on it and I regretted it and I felt bad about it, but I couldn't because I needed yeah. that income. I mean, the income's phenomenal. You got, you yeah. know it. The it, income's yeah. phenomenal, and it's one of the best incomes I've ever had in my life. And I needed it not because of, for buying boats and toys, and just to survive and mm -hmm. pay for the kids and everything. And I couldn't see myself getting out of it. Yeah, I didn't know any other way. I'm I'm not super educated. Uh, it is I've reinvented myself a dozen times. Uh, you know that whole story up yeah. and down. So, uh, but this was the best thing that I had going. So I couldn't just walk away and I couldn't figure out how to walk away. And I didn't have the faith. I didn't have the ingrain where you just, you knew you had to get out. I mean, it was a life or death. You yeah. had to get out. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. And, and I wasn't at that point yet, but I knew I had to figure out some way. And to this day, I'm still working at it, but I am getting out. I yeah. am getting out. So Kevin tells you, John's been born again, and, and so we have you over to some meetings, and yep. you, you meet the new John Simmons, and we and I was <laughs> I was totally amazed on the turnaround. I mean, I could tell in your whole again, and this is not me. So anybody thinks that I've done this on my own, like I'm the first one to credit that God and Jesus did a 180 in my life, and I will shot it from the rooftops that I was going down a road of suicide, and I was about to be dead, but God showed up. Thank God, yes. you know. And I could tell you were so yeah. pumped, and not alcohol pumped and not poker pumped that's all different i mean mm -hmm. you were it was there you could feel the fire in the room that's how you were just so excited you, you couldn't you couldn't talk enough about it you you just wanted you were so excited and i i'm going like wow yeah. and then and i attended a couple of meetings and then you're going like and that's the birth of testimony house yeah. started mm -hmm. from there you had this great idea yeah. god showed me this and i'm going you know what Anybody else would have said that? I'm like, yeah, pfft, yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> right. Show me, show me where God said this to you. Not that I wasn't a believer. Yeah. But when you say it, and knowing your past history, I'm going like, yes, that I can believe. Yeah. That I can believe because you had no other agenda. You didn't have an agenda to say, you know, I want this because we're going to open testimony house, and I'm going to. No, you said. God showed me this. God put it in a dream. God told me this. And that's where I could believe because, like I said, knowing the old and knowing the new, this isn't something you make up. This isn't something you just pop into your imagination. Yeah. yeah. It's there. It's very, and I could feel it. I could feel it. It, it, it. That encourages me because it's like at the time, I'm a, you know, I've been born again for six months and I've been praying nonstop. Lord, show me the vision you have for my life. Cause I heard it in a church service that God has a plan for Christians. And I was like, I want that. I like, I want that. I've been chasing purpose my whole life. Although I would have never called it that, you know, like sure. trying to find who I am and what am I supposed to be doing here? And I want to just play poker, but poker never fulfilled me and it just made me unhappy. And obviously the results of my gambling weren't always negative, right? Or typically negative or my drinking or whatever it was. And then I get radically born again. God delivers me of this crazy 10 year long addiction. And all of a sudden I'm chasing his purpose for my life. I have no idea what that looks like. And so when he finally says, John, you got to start a ministry and it's going to be called testimony house. And I'm like, what's a ministry? Because Tony, I don't know if you remember this part of the story. The only ministry I'd ever heard of was the parking lot ministry at the church. I was going to, it's the only okay. time it's the only time I'd ever heard that term ministry be used, right. you know? And I was like, you want me to stand in the parking lot and wave at people? Like, I didn't know like <laughs> ministry. I didn't like the concept of like things outside the church that go and help people and do things right, right. was totally, uh, it wasn't a thought in my head that I had because I'd never even heard of it before. It's not like I was in the church for 10 years and like right. I was, I had all this like, uh, you know. You'd uh, experience yeah. church similar to my church. You go there, you listen to the pastor yeah. in and out kind of thing. Exactly and once a week, right. yeah. And you so, didn't know there's an outside world around Exactly. It. Or did I ever want to be in? I'd never, I had never done anything as an adult that didn't pay me until I joined the church and started volunteering. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like for me, like my time was like, you got to pay me for my time. You know, like the idea of yeah. serving someone was so outside of my, my Realm. purview. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so when God calls me to start a ministry and he's like, you're going to serve people for a living, you know, I was like, what? 
what is this? What is this look even look? What is a what's a testimony house? What is a testimony house? Like, I'm a dumb poker dealer. Like that's what I like to tell people. Like that's all I knew. I yep. knew how to deal poker cards around a table. Like yep. that's what was my experience in life yeah. as an adult. Yeah. And here I am, and God's given me a vision to start sharing testimonies with people and, and open up this building and do Bible studies. And I was like, I'm not good enough for any of this. Mm. I'm not smart enough. I, like I, I barely opened this Bible book, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and all of a sudden, I have visions and dreams of things that are so complex, so well thought out, so. Uh, and and I say this not because they're my ideas. I'm saying them because oh my gosh, I can't believe these are that, that he would even share these ideas. It's like being it's like being invited into the private room or something. Right. You know, it's like uh, come you're come on back here. We've got the special table for you. Or you here's know, the, here's the war room. Yeah, We're yeah. gonna show you the plan. Yeah, and I couldn't. I felt so special. Yeah, I felt so special. And when I started sharing that idea with people, Tony, and this is this is real talk. A lot of people were very skeptical of what I was saying, and it wasn't just because. Uh, God doesn't give people ministries. It was because they looked at me on the surface. Who was John? John was a problem gambler. He's been born again for like three months. Yeah. You know, uh, he has no, I have no roadmap of saying like a history of saying like, I can do this guys. Watch me. Right. I'm saying like, I want to do this. I am not qualified. <laughs> Would you come along? <laughs> and, and everybody's like, God doesn't give baby Christians ministries. I heard that a lot of, and to, including strong Christians at the churches I was going to, God does not give ministries to baby Christians. I think that's now, I think that's one of the most ludicrous things I've ever heard. Uh, because, uh, look at every apostle, look at every, you know, Paul, I can, I can, I can, I can call, uh, I can quote you. 40 people in the Bible who were all, uh, exactly. <laughs> Where did the first 12 come exactly, from? Right. Exactly. They were fishermen. They were farmers. Yes. They were, you know, they were just with laborers and stuff. Yeah. And they were the very first yeah. Christians. It's like they, they wrote the handbook. They worked the handbook. How, yeah. how, how could they start a ministry that encompassed the world because of God? Yeah. And so 10 years later, uh, we're still doing testimony house. Yeah. I have four beautiful kids, a marriage. I, you know, we've been able to do this for so long now. And it hasn't always gone in the areas we thought it was going to go, but we've always been able to help and, and pursue God. And we continue to share God with people in a variety of different ways. But initially, when I start sharing this idea with anybody and everybody's just sort of like giving me the side eye a little bit, like, uh, I don't know about this, John, or, you know, like sure. a lot of even the people in the casino were just like, uh, I remember when I finally quit the casino to start Testimony House. They were like, oh, you're going to be just like Joyce Meyer. You just want to steal our money. And they were just like yeah. venom at me, you know, venom yeah, exactly. that they were so upset with me. I was like. How come you're mad? I was like, first off, I'm not asking for any of you for money. <laughs> like that hasn't even been a conversation that's happened. But they'll they'll in the poker room they'll cheer on Albert Pujols if he hits a home run and he makes ten million dollars for sure, you know. But Joyce Meyer helps you know people you know find Jesus and if she has ten cents in her pocket, that's they want to get the whip out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I yeah. Don't understand it exactly. And so for you to be such an encouragement to me early in my walk, for you to say, you know what, John, I believe that God's with you because I know where you came to take the opposite road was like. I know where you've been. I've seen you at your worst. Yep. And what what's happened to you is di is unexplainable almost, right? I mean Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And that's that like I said it's like I mean if there was if you if you wanted to call it a miracle which it wasn't, but if I witnessed anything, I witnessed that and I and I could have swore I mean, I would have, yeah. gambler's terms, I would have bet the farm that it wasn't, <laughs> and I would have lost the farm in the process. We had a, we had some uh, poker dealers who worked with us, uh, or you may have dealt to them at some point. I remember a couple of them in a group, after spending some time with me, was like, if he's still a Christian in year, I'll be a Christian. <laughs> Bro, y'all better sign up. Ten well, years later. Where are you? <laughs> Come on in. Water yep, farm. Yep. Here's the clipboard. <laughs> Put your name on it. <laughs> yeah, because everybody thought I was going to fall back into these old ways and oh, my sure, old lifestyle. This, sure. this was just another one of my methods to, like, uh, you know, try and fix what was broken in escape. my life. Yeah, escape. Yeah, and, yeah. and trying to figure that things out. But it wasn't. It was it was a radical shift because I encountered the real life physical yep. Jesus who loves us, who cared for us, who died for us on the and cross. And I watched your growth you know? over the years. Yeah. Yep. And, and so, uh, uh, and so, what did this mean to you? And you said you had the you know the email and things. I did. You, you know, I sent you this. Like I said, it was in 2011. I got my new eyes. Yeah. They, oh, cataracts. Okay. Oh, good. Cataracts are done. I don't need those to read. I never <laughs> needed them to read. But okay, I'm going to read the whole thing real fast. Okay. Uh, my great friend John, this is my testimony for the past year, of which you share. 
I have not forgotten nor forsaken you and Megan and Kevin and all the people that have been associated with Testimony House. Throughout the year, the Lord had blessed me and my family on numerous occasions, and I took it for granted. The more I was blessed, the less I returned to the church. I found excuses for being lazy and not attending many functions. I started to feel empty and disconnected. Then Saturday night at work, I was prompted to look up the service hours for St. Louis Family Church. First service was 8 a.m. I got out of work at 4.30 a.m., went home and went to bed. I couldn't sleep. God told me to get up and go to church and read John and get reconnected. I did as I was told. 6 a.m., I'm in their parking lot reading John. He didn't tell me when to stop, so I read it all, and I was truly moved to tears. I felt the connection starting to take a hold of me. This is where I was saved, and this is where I felt saved again. Not in the grip of forgetting about who saved me, not forgetting to praise him. I truly believe he wanted me to read John for two reasons. One, all the stories of John are about people connecting with Jesus, and two, my great friend John, who is just like John, going forth preaching and believing in the faith that God put forth, doing what I think God told me to do, but I didn't have enough strength or faith to do it. John, you helped me anchor my faith by seeing you stand in faith, and not by sight. I'll get in touch with you soon. Can't wait to talk to you about this. My friends in faith, John, Megan, and Kevin, thank you. Yeah, I remember that. Very, very, thank you so much for those kind words. Again, even years later after hearing them again, uh, to refresh my memory of that, it's uh, it's quite an honor to, uh, you know, to see anything that God has done in my life or anyone's life uh, impact others. You know, you see this a lot. At churches and the pastor will say something to somebody to say I got a word out of that and that really changed my life and things like that and for somebody like me to think you know that um, God can use anybody to do those kinds of moments is such a, an, an honor you know and it's exactly why it was worth quitting my job at the casino and making you know ninety thousand dollars a year twenty years ago you know it's like and, and having relationships with people like you has really just been a blessing to me and I'm so thankful that uh, what God does in our lives when we let him you know well, and that's, in this, like I said, I found this, I wrote it in 2011, I know I sent it to you, um, then uh, I found it about, no, oh, probably four or five years ago, again, I don't know why, but for, so I'm scrolling through it, and I'm in the middle of a slump of some sort, but I scroll through and I see it, and I'm going like, oh, you're pointing it out to me again, you yeah. make it, and I read it, and I'm going like, someday I'm going to show this again to John, and I was, and yeah. you know. Then you say this, and I'm going. I'm going to find that again. Yeah. But I it took me. It didn't take me that long to find out. I'm going, I know I put it here somewhere. Yeah. But I always, since I found it five years ago, I always reflect back on it because you are a strong inspiration for me to keep going and remembering where I was mm -hmm. and how far I've gotten. And where hopefully someday I will end. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I want to encourage you, you know, you can say I'm an inspiration, but when I hear you talking right now and I, and I think about the people who are going to watch this uh, episode and this conversation later, uh, you know, you talk about, well, I, I've been so faithful to share it. Like, look at what you're doing right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're doing exactly what God wants you to do. And it's at yeah. the perfect time. It's the perfect moment. And you've got these beautiful daughters and they're asking questions about Jesus. And I mean, what an inspiration yeah. you're, you're being in your own family right now, you know? And you're going through different things and you're trusting God for other areas of your life too. But aren't we all, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, so to see you in a season of life where you're, you're ready to, you know, give yourself back to whoever and use what you've learned now, the experiences now that you have, and you're really ready to trust God and just go wherever he wants you to go. And yep. I'm excited to see what that looks like for you, you know? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I remind everybody that, uh, you, you know, age is age doesn't matter to God. He picked Moses out, you know, <laughs> right at a ripe old age, you know. So. And guess what? That's yeah. what they talked about at church yeah. today. Uh, well, like, he's saying, you know, and because he he's talking about our future, as in North Road Church, North Road Church, as in the next ten people in that door are the people that we want to see, mm -hmm. and all the children work with the children, work with the foster kids, because those are the kids that are coming up to take our places and stuff. And so. Don't think because you're 60 or on your downward years, years or your ending years mm -hmm. 
Moses didn't start till he was 80 and Abraham was 90 yep. and you know he said that's when God picked him to start not yeah. picked him to stop yeah it's it's an, it's it, you know I wrote this book God has a sentence for your life and it's really all about finding God's purpose for whatever season you're in I read it's, that you yeah. gave me the copy <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not about you know well God gave me to this when I was five and it's this long roadmap to get to the end no it's about like okay this year, God just wants me to help a family, you know, adopt a family, and I'm just going to be their mentor. Or God has me to do, you know, start a church. Or God has me to just start a business. Or God has me to be a good manager of someone else's business, right? right. <laughs> like, you don't always get to do things for yourself, you know? Right. God right. has me to be a dual rate in a casino because the people in these casinos are unsaved, and they need somebody to convince them, that, <laughs> you know, and show them the light and salt of, uh, of the earth, you know? Right. And so whatever that sentence is, it can be done at any age. There is no qualifier right. for how old you are, or what you've done in the past. I can tell you that uh, I spent the first 30 years of my life messing it all up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I still mess it up today. I'm not perfect by no means, but uh, right. uh, I know that the things I do today are worth more in, in, in the scope of kingdom work than the selfish work. Like I told you, I was so selfish yeah. before. And it's like, when I wake up in the morning, I think like, how can I help somebody else today? And if we're thinking, if we have that mindset, that's the mindset that Christ had. He, he turned the pyramid upside down, you know, to be greatest, you have yep. to be servant of all, you yep. know? And so if you just have this mindset of, Hey, today, who am I going to serve? And for you, I've seen it over and over and over again, Tony, you, you talk about encouraging you, you've encouraged me by being just the, the great father of uh, adopted children, the great, the great calm dual rate, the, you know, <laughs> the great calm uh, converse, like when, when we've struggled in ministry and uh, you know, we've had seasons of doubt or wondering if like we're doing the right thing and all this, and you'll be the first one to call and say, God's got you. It's going to be okay. You know, just relax. And I, cause I, I get, I'm high strung sometimes, you know, it's my personality know, to, be, to be passionate. I'm passionate, you know, everybody knows. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, and, and you're always that calming voice in my ear, you know, whether it's through an email or a text message or a phone call, or whether it's, uh, our, our yearly dinners that we go on you right. know, around Christmas time, you know, it's, you're just been such a blessing to me over the years. And, you know, don't think that I don't, uh, see that. And that's why I want to have you on, not just to talk about all the old stories, <laughs> but because I care so deeply for you and I'm so thankful for all the, all that you've done in my life. Well, I'm glad I'm glad because yeah. hearing that makes me feel like, you know, I'm, I'm out there, you know, I'm, yeah. I, I know I influence people. Sometimes yeah. I, hopefully I'm influencing them the right way. Yeah. Well, I've never heard anybody say a bad word about you. And I think that's a testament to uh, what God has done in your heart because so often, uh, especially in the casino industry, uh, people rub each other the wrong way. And there's a lot of demons in that place. And there's a lot of things going on that make people angry and frustrated and bitter and all, uh, all the negative emotions that a person can have. Sure. And they always take it out on each other in yeah. one way or another. Like I'm, I'm going to call in tonight to spite them or whatever, the, yeah. whatever it is. Right. I'm going to yeah. flip the chairs over. I'm gonna, we've had people throw cards at us and all sorts of things, you know, yep. for you to have, you know, have your light in that place for as long as you've had. Cause I know there aren't many Christians in the casino world guys. No. Uh, I've lived there, uh, you know, and, and even after I got born again, trying trying to find someone like me was few and far between. And so to see someone like you continuing to keep up that good fight, because it is a good fight. It is a good fight to keep your light on in dark places. And, yep. you, and you continually daily, uh, just at it, your at your job, have to go to these places. And, and, and you were always in the stories that I hear where you continually share your faith with whoever, whether it's in the break room or at a table. And you're not really supposed to do it, but you, you find you find avenues to have there's conversations. Ways, there's ways you can <laughs> slip it in there. Yeah. And you've always been so consistent to try. You know, regardless of what the results is, it, I know that Tony's in, is willing to do this you yeah. know, for Jesus, and it's so good. Yeah, yeah, I remember uh, times that that it was put on my heart to call you up, and you'd say, "I'd say, how you doing, John?" You're going, like, uh, you know, I don't know. We're really trying times ago. Look back where you were five years ago, though. Yeah, and look how farther you are now. Yeah. Because I could always see, I could see you in progressional growth. And when you're when you're living the growth, it doesn't look like you're doing it, but you plant the tree. And I'm not saying I planted the tree, but when you see a tree planted yeah. and then you watch it grow, as long as you're not part of that tree and you see it and you go, wow, look at the amazing. Yeah, you told me one time about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the branches going short, but not deep you know, the roots, right? You, right. You, you, you can plant a hundred things. If they go, if the roots don't go deep enough, they'll never last. You know, right. if you got the one right. thing and you just trust and you let the roots go deep, like we've done with testimony house, it's mm -hmm. going to stand. It's going to stand for the test of time. And that's always stuck with me that I don't even know if you remember telling me yep. that or not, but uh, that word of advice has always stuck with me uh, pretty deeply. So thank you for yep. that. 
like yeah. a strong oak you gotta yeah. have you dab a deep root and the tree will stand but you know the weeping yeah. willow tends yeah. to bend and die yeah uh, i appreciate you coming on the show today tony it's been a pleasure to just chat been, with you it's been a pleasure getting together again <laughs> and enjoying this and all it, right it cleans my heart <laughs> it really does i hope it does for everybody who's watched today uh don't forget that if you haven't already please subscribe to this channel and uh until next time guys we pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today